So, our first speaker today is Tony. Tony joins us from Amsterdam, where he's the Lean Innovation Program Manager. And while Service Desk is uh, primarily designed as an IT service desk, we wanted to show you how we've been dog footing it and using it in different use cases. And in this instance, Tony is going to share with you how we've been using it to support external customers. So if you want to join me in welcoming Tony to the stage, thank you. Thanks, Christoph. And, ah, okay. Right. Good morning. Um, so, um, here we go. My name is Tony, as Christoph said, uh, and for the last few years, I've run the site that we use to provide customer service, uh, support.atlassian.com, and I'm here to talk to you about the work we did in moving our customer advocates to JIRA and Service Desk. So, first of all, what, what is a customer advocate? Um, you may have heard that we don't have salespeople in the traditional sense, um, but it, it doesn't mean we have people who don't talk to you. Uh, we do have people who uh, help you through the process, help you ex understand if the software is right for you, explain our license terms, smooth out any pay payment problems. And uh, at Atlassian, most of those people are called customer advocates. Uh, there's around 20 of them scattered around the globe in Amsterdam, San Francisco, Austin, and now Manila. And collectively, they handle over 11,000 requests a month. So that's about 25 and change per person per day. So although they do answer phones, uh, most of the time, our customer advocates interact with customers electronically. Uh, some people get in touch via a contact form. Some people use email. But from there, everything we do is back and forth by email responses and by the web. So we made a change recently to the way we handle customer service. Uh, and like many teams, we made a change because we had problems with the way things were. Uh, specifically, we had a problem with the help desk software we used. So our customer advocates are a very small team within Atlassian, 20 out of nearly 1,000. And they depend on the lar larger organization to help them answer questions. For example, technical questions about what the product can and can't do, smoothing out billing problems for complex environments, multiple countries. And because our customer advocates were using different tools than the rest of our organization, they had difficulty collaborating. They were isolated. They commonly had to change systems to work with their colleagues and they didn't have the option to even show people what they were seeing. They would have to describe the customer's concerns to another, whoop, to another colleague without the full context. So without the context, it's like a game of rumors. You ask for one thing, and you may get the wrong answer because they don't know what the real question was to start with. And that means unnecessary back and forth. It means time wasted. So the next problem we had is that our old system had limited data and metrics. Uh, we need to handle a high volume, again, 11,000 cases a month, 20 people, and that means we need a low-touch approach. We need to be able to give customers what they need quickly, waste our, not waste our time on bad tools and processes. So to make this happen, we need to understand our tools and processes and how they affect our outcomes. So I'm sure you've seen variations on this quote before. I chose Peter Drucker. Uh, what's measured proves. Uh, so this quote makes a few assumptions. It assumes you're measuring the right things and are doing so more or less accurately. And once you do that, you have a way to improve your process. So it's difficult to see, teach someone to handle a higher caseload. Oops, sorry. I was trying to scroll down in my notes. Handle a higher caseload when you can't really tell how long they spend handling a case versus waiting to hear back from the customer. It's also difficult to improve your process when you can't tell which parts of the process you spend your time on. So we can't talk about metrics in a service organization without talking about SLAs. They are the bread and butter of service organizations. They're in agreement with your customers about how long they should expect to wait for help. 
They're also a key performance in indicator when working with your teams. They let you know how you're doing in fulfilling your promise to the customer, and they highlight areas where you need to focus with training and coaching teams and team members. So our old system didn't have SLAs at all, but it did keep track of a couple similar metrics, as you see here, time to first response, time to assign cases. Uh, but these times were not configurable. You could say whether or not to include weekends, but beyond that, you couldn't control how these metrics were defined. So this is particularly relevant when you look at something like resolution speed. Our old system would take account of working hours, but wouldn't take account of time spent waiting for the customer to answer a question or provide additional information. So your Monday numbers look bad because on Friday, you gave your customers a response, and then the clock kept running while you waited to hear from them over the weekend. In August, your numbers look bad because you gave the customer a response and you waited for them to respond while they were on vacation. So the next key metric is time tracking. Uh, that's basically, for a service organization, that's how you measure your cost. The best way to understand how you spend your time is to track your time. And our previous system did have time tracking. You could log how many hours and minutes you spent and when per case. Uh, you could manage the entries. You'd, you could delete a previous entry and add a new one if you screwed up. You could also leave notes about what you were doing at the time, but they were totally unstructured. So it was hard to get a picture of, over time, what parts of your process you spent uh, uh, doing what. So uh, one of the reasons it was difficult is that the old system didn't have a good workflow. It had um, a single status drop and two buttons to either keep the ticket open or close it. So a manual drop, uh, drop down for your status does have some advantages. It's very flexible. You can always choose to move between one point and the other. But it comes at a cost. Uh, your team have to memorize what each status means and have to agree when to use it. If they're confused, you'll end up with things where, where they shouldn't be. Uh, and there's no hints to help them decide when to move case to which status. So on top of our limited data, we had limited reporting. So we did have a series of canned reports on the numbers they collected. Um, the point here is not to highlight any particular one, just to show you there were a few of them. Uh, the problem was you couldn't define you wanted, and you couldn't define how you wanted to drill into that. So finally, our previous tool was hard to customize. You did have the ability to add information to a ticket, but only inflexibly. And a lot of other parts of the system you couldn't configure at all. So for example, uh, in our old system, this was the right-hand side of the screen. All of the metadata you could enter about an issue, and it was cluttered with every question it was ever useful to ask. And it was hard to tell the most important data from the stuff that only needed to be entered once in a blue moon. And as I mentioned before, there were no SLAs. You couldn't configure them because they didn't exist. Reports couldn't be added, removed, or updated. So that's where we were, the problems we were trying to solve. Our teams were isolated. They didn't have a good way to understand their process. Uh, and if, even if they did understand their process, they couldn't easily make changes. So let's talk about the solutions to each of these problems point by point. So first, for us, the solution is JIRA and Service Desk. So let's talk about Service Desk made possible for our team. So with JIRA, Desk, instead of an isolated team, we have a connected team. And as you may imagine, as a, at a company that values openness and transparency and that sells collaboration tools, we place on being able to easily collaborate with your colleagues. So with Service Desk and Jira, we gain the ability for our team to use at mentions and shares. Thanks. Yeah. How do we switch this one off? 
Okay, good. Yep. Thanks. Appreciate that. Sorry for this, guys. I think we'll have a little better experience on not dropping out or looking down and seeing. Take a minute to make sure you can actually hear me. Just a slight pause. Okay. Can you can you hear me when I'm facing forward? Okay. Good. I think this will be much better. I felt like I was kind of <laughs> holding my phone in my shoulder while I'm trying to talk to you. So here we go again. So with Service Desk, we gained at mentions and shares, two key features of most of our products. Uh, and at mentions, in the context of, of customer service, are particularly useful because you're bringing a colleague in as part of describing why you need their help. You say, please take a look at this name. This thing is happening and I need you to do this. Uh, they see the instructions when they get there and it's part of the history. Colleagues who were visiting the case see, oh right, someone already called Tony in and made him aware of it, right? I don't need to do that, it's already been done. And with good collaboration tools, a 30 second question takes 30 seconds to ask it may take a little longer to answer, but you don't have to translate, provide the context, run people down. It's much easier. So we talked about data and metrics before. Um, as I mentioned, that was a problem with our old system. And Service Desk gave us a lot of powerful new options. Good metrics start with collecting good data. And for us, labels were a big part of that. It sounds kind of funny, but um, it, it was kind of, it was really important. Uh, labels are ideal for giving teams uh, a way to add information uh, that you don't always need to collect and for letting them do that when they feel it's necessary uh, and not, with, not uh, have to ask an administrator or a developer to help them out. So for example, you're running a marketing campaign. You want to tag issues that come in related to that campaign. The campaign's running for two weeks. It's not running for the rest of the life of the company. Uh, or you have a problem with your billing system and you identify customers that were affected. You have a one-time problem. You want to track who's affected and then deal with those. I mean, it's, it's perfect for short-term concerns. Uh, so we, we went through all of the questions that we had collected before, and there were about 80 of them. We had about 80 custom fields in our own, that, that long scrolling list you saw. And we found out that, that 20 of them, 21 in fact, were used less than a tenth of a percent of the time. So to enter the information that you cared about, in most cases, you had to tiptoe past all of the information that wasn't really relevant. So we removed 21 custom fields in favor of labels uh, and made it easier for our team to focus on the information that they need for every case, and not just the edge cases. So SLAs, we didn't really have at all in our old system. And Service Desk made a huge difference here. So this is uh, blurred to protect the innocent. But um, the, the point I wanted you to see here is the right-hand column, all of the times running down the side. Don't worry, this is uh, test data where we cloned it and then it was sitting there. We don't intend to keep you waiting for 78 hours, 35 hours, et cetera. Um, so the point here is that your work is uh, put together into a shared queue, which is important for teams that manage a common work, workload, uh, and that you see the information in the order uh, that it needs to be attended to. The people who have been waiting the longest, the people who are the farthest behind your SLA or, or who will reach SLA the soonest, they're at the top and you know that they need attention first. So I'll drill into this a bit more. Um, SLAs are also highly visible on your issue view. Here we see kind of a zoom in. Um, and I want to make two points here. Uh, first of all, having this visibility on the issue view, it's key in helping you meet your goals. Um, so for example, I have a timer in front of me that tells me how long I have before the end of the track. It doesn't mean that I focus on it all the time, but it helps me know how to pace myself, how to leave room for the next speaker, how to leave room for your questions. It helps me do my job better. And having an SLA on your issue view does the same thing for customer service. 
I also wanted to point out there's three SLAs. You can have different SLAs, and you can add the ones that make sense for your organization. Maybe for your organization, first response, overall response are all you care about, but maybe you have other metrics that you care about, and you can have as many as you need. So as we talked about earlier, a good workflow helps you break down the process of helping your customers and understand how you spend your time. So with Service Desk and with Jira, the workflow is highly customizable. You can define all of the steps and also the path between the steps. You can control who can execute which steps, uh, which lets you delegate work to the right people without having your staff get confused, take issues down the wrong, wrong road. Uh, they just have a clear path to, for example, escalate for technical input, um, to get feedback from finance, et cetera. Um, and those buttons appear in, in, at the right time. So what about the customer side? You, ha you have this ability to make this great complex business process. I wanted to mention this because from the customer side, there is no workflow. The beauty of Service Desk is that the complexity stays where it's needed. On your side of the, of the fence, business processes are configured the way they need to be, and your customers are never aware of it. All they do is come in and comment on a case or reply to a ticket, and Service Desk automatically transitions the issue to the next appropriate state. So for example, a lot of back and forth workflows are, we're waiting for the customer, they're waiting for us. If we're waiting for the customer, when they reply, when they take any activity on the ticket, it should come back to our attention. And that's what Service Desk does for you automatically. And this makes it clear to your staff which things need their input and which things they can safely set aside for a few minutes. So back to time tracking. Uh, if we're going to understand how we spend our time, we need an easy way to track our time. So with Service Desk and Jira, uh, we have the ability to track time, again, hours, minutes, days. Um, and, but what's powerful is that we have the ability to track it in context. We can associate that block of time spent with the activity we took. If we're handling an incoming case and we send it to the customer, we can see how long we spent on that first interaction uniquely. And we'll get into why that's so important in just a bit. First, we need to talk about the change log. This is just a view of the history of the case. So the workflow diagram you, see, you saw earlier is just one stop in the life of a case. Um, that that you, you see uh, on the issue view how things are now. With the change history, you see how they've changed over time, including what statuses they've moved through, what information has been updated, uh, and just as importantly, who's taken action. You can see um, who did what and when uh, throughout the whole history of the case. And I always like to mention this with Jira 6 and higher. This is searchable. You can actually search through the change history. Uh, so this example is kind of illustrative. I can say, show me all the cases who, whose status was ever changed to resolved. And by itself, that's not very useful. Um, eventually, all of your tickets will be resolved. So if you said, show me all the tickets who, that have ever been resolved, you're just looking at all of your old cases. But what's powerful is you can say, show me just the cases that have been resolved in the last three days. So for example, your team lead might for a week review all of the cases that are resolved to see how often they reopen. They might look through uh, for the quality of the interactions. They might look through for unanswered questions, uh, for, for problems in their process. So let's put time tracking, workflow, and change history together and show you what we have the ability to do now that we have good data and metrics. So how many people are familiar with a value stream map? Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, you're going to have to go through a little bit of a refresher. So this is a value stream map. It's a tool that comes out of lean manufacturing uh, and then some of the other variants that apply lean thinking to software processes, et cetera. Uh, in a value stream, you look at the process of giving the customer what they want from end to end. In manufacturing, this would be everything from your supply chain to your manufacturing process to your distribution. 
our value, what we provide, is information to help you get back to work. Um, and we need to look at the stages where we provide value from end to end. This is kind of a simplified view of the process. What we're doing is we're looking from start to finish, how do we spend our time, and then which of those activities add value and which don't. So in our case, value is the information you need. Cost is the time we spend giving it to you. So uh, we look at these low value areas, things that you don't care about, the time I spend ask, asking follow-up questions for finance, filling out forms, things that don't get you your answer any faster. We look at those low value areas and we work to either eliminate them via automation, for example, or to reduce the time we spend on them by changing our processes, removing processes, et cetera. So that's just one example of how you can use this fine-grained information to improve your processes, and it's something we didn't have the ability to do before moving to JIRA Service Desk. So let's move on to reporting. Uh, value stream map is the kind of thing you would do maybe quarterly, maybe monthly, depending on your organization. Uh, but it's, it's not a substitute for good real-time reports. Your operational teams are daily trying to understand the volume that's coming in so that, for example, they can bring in extra people if there's spikes in demand. Um, and they also want to see how they're doing in real time in meeting customer needs. So Service Desk Reporting does a really great job of this. I'll show you a few shots. With Service Desk, we have the ability to add our own reports uh, where we say, what issues we care about using JQL, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, so in addition to the overall time metrics we had before, we can also report specifically on our SLAs, how often we met or breached SLAs. So given that this is kind of the point of SLAs, this is pretty important. Our teams can see how well they're doing in meeting the promise that they made to their customers. And they can work to improve the performance over time. They can also set private SLAs to say, okay, this is the SLA we're thinking of announcing at our big conference for the year. We want to know if it's realistic, how often we can meet that. We, we, we say that we're going to do a day now. We're thinking about announcing six hours. We want to try that for a month. So this kind of thing, you, it doesn't even have to be the SLAs you already have. You can use it to reach for tomorrow's SLAs. So these are all customizable, which we'll get into in the final section, but I wanted to point out not only can you say what graphs you have, you can also control what series are on each graph. And this is a good example, because um, it compares workload and responsiveness. So this is an incredibly common question that you would have in a customer service organization with multiple offices. How are we doing in responding to the load in each region? Do we have the right staffing in each region? If all of our customers are in this time zone and all of our staff are here, we're not going to do as good a job of matching that. And over time, we'll move people around, change shifts, et cetera. These are really common questions you'd want to answer, and Service Desk lets you answer them in real time. So we'll, we'll get into how we configure all of this in, in just a few minutes, um, because we're going to talk about how easy it is to customize Service Desk. So first of all, I'm going to keep talking about SLAs, because if you're running a customer service organization, and you're anything like me, you talk about SLAs a lot. So they're, they're one of the most important features of Service Desk, and they're also one of the most configurable. So we can define when we work. In other words, you can see down at the bottom the calendar we choose to use. We, could, we can have working hours that fit our, our workforce and also our, con our country, like some countries don't have Saturday and Sunday weekends. So we can define when we work, and that's very important. But we can also define when the clock should be paused. And this is a simple example. We don't have any pauses. But you could, for example, have cases in which um, you want to let customers pause to take time and look at their uh, situation. You want to give them longer to respond. Or you may just simply say, when, I, when the ball is in your court, customer, I'm going to pause the clock, this one clock. Let's say that it's a time spent waiting for customer service. You want to know how long your customers spend waiting for you. And the time that uh, you spend waiting for them shouldn't count against that. So you can define very fine-grained 
what starts the clock, clock, what restarts the clock, what pauses the clock, and what stops the clock. So again, as I mentioned before, we can also have, we can have multiple SLAs, but within an SLA, we can also have multiple goals. We can say, for this type of issue, we have a four-hour goal. For this type, we have a one-hour goal. And this is set up just like mail filters, the one you want to be most important, you put up at the top, the first one that matches, that's the, that's the goal that you get for that SLA. And this is incredibly powerful uh, when you want to do common things like sell different levels of service, which is incredibly common for a service organization. You want to say, okay, for free, you get this kind of response. If you want to pay for a supplemental service, you get this level of response. If you want to pay for top tier, et cetera. It gives you the ability to break down your SLAs by anything you know about the issue. It can be who's reporting it, what groups they belong to. You, we'll get into an example later where we talk about this. Um, it can also be who's working on it. It can be when it was reported. Anything you, can, anything you know about the issue, you can use to, set, to define the SLAs. And we'll get into this again with all of the other parts of Service Desk, because it's all based on JQL. Anything you know about the issue or the people working on it, you can use to segment your workload. So we're back to agent views, which are basically a shared view of the incoming workload. You can see that we have a whole bunch of them. And one of the reasons we do is that it's incredibly easy to make them. You can make them for as many groups as you have, as many questions as you have. Let's say that today you, ha you want to try something new with experts, which we'll get into in a bit. It's very easy to add a new agent view. So here's how you configure an agent view. Uh, you can see mostly it's JQL. This is kind of a longish example. JQL allows you to do very uh, uh, complex queries where you can say this and that or that. Um, what you don't see in this example is that you also can very finely control the ordering, which typically with a service desk, you would, you would order by the time that they have to breach SLA. So for example, uh, with incoming issues, you might have a triage view where you say, I want to see new issues, and I want to see them ordered by time uh, to first response. What we've agreed is the time to first response so that my triagers can go through and respond to them. Or you might have one that's ordered by overall response time or overall time spent waiting, and you can say, I want my most experienced people to look at the issues that are getting ready to take longer than they should and I want for them to go through and step in and provide feedback and keep everything on track. These are just two examples of the kind of things you can do when you have a language like JQL defining your agent views. So here we see the same report we saw earlier. Um, and in addition to being real time, and uh, I didn't mention that you can drill down into them, every one of these data points you can click on, get the numbers. Um, you can also define not only the graph itself, but each of the series. So um, in this example I've shown you, you can have different metrics that you're, that you're looking at on the same graph. Um, you could also have different teams, different regions, something you know about the customer, different groups of customers. Any way you want to segment it up, you can do, because Again, it's JQL. Anything you know about the issue, you can use to create your series. So, as you've heard with Jira and Service Desk, there's lots of options for customization, um, and that's great, but what's, what's also really important is who can make the changes. So in other systems, you would have system administrators, developers, integrators would have the ability change the way things work. With JIRA and Service Desk, you can devolve that authority down to your operational teams. You can give them control over their process. So I'll give you a quick example of how we've used this. In the middle of our migration process, when most people wouldn't want to hear about new work or new requirements, our, our teams wanted to make a process change. They said, I know we're in the middle of a migration, but we need to respond to this new change. And in this case, it was Experts. Experts are a bit different. They work with our customers. They work with a high volume of customers, and they have different issues 
than everyone else. Usually, if there are simpler questions, they've already taken care of them long ago. They come to us with weird edge cases, new things we haven't seen, new types of requests, and we need to give them uh, a little different type of feedback. And we're also working with people, the same people over and over again. Uh, so, so we kind of wanted to pull them out of the line and have one person who was to work with our experts. So this is just a pilot program, an idea, something to try uh, to service one part of our customer base effectively. Um, and with Service Desk, it was very easy to make this change. First of all, you want to be able to show someone uh, this class of issues coming in from experts. It was as easy as identifying who the experts were that you wanted to, to put in the pilot program, making a query that said, Any, anything that comes in with from Jill, Frank, or Mary, put that in this queue. We're there in our pilot program. We're going to try something out. If you have integration upstream and you have groups that are provisioned from some kind of CRM system, you can make the decision based on a group as well. You could say anybody in this group, expert customers, goes to this queue. Uh, so that's the agent view, very simple to set up. Same thing for SLAs and reports. And again, with a new team, you're not necessarily announcing your SLAs. You're, you're putting in your aspirational SLAs, the SLAs you would like to deliver to your customers, and you have the ability to say, okay, how are we doing before we announce it to everyone and then deliver that at 20%? Let's try it out for a month and see how we're doing. And all of this was as easy as a few clicks, a few lines of JQL, uh, and it could all be set up and adjusted in real time. In the middle of a larger project, it wasn't even a question. It was, sure, we can do that. Click, click, it's done. And no developers, no system integrators, no system admins. It could all be done by the team leads or the team themselves. Whoever you decide should be able to do it. They don't have to have the keys to your whole system to change just the parts that they care about. So to wrap things up, with Service Desk and Jira, we now have a connected team who can get the help they need from the whole organization in real time. We have great data and metrics and great reporting on top of that, which helps us decide how to change our processes to better serve our customers. And our teams can also update their processes themselves without waiting for scarce developer, integrator, or system administration resources. So that's the story of why we moved our customer advocates to Service Desk and what we gained. Uh, and with that, I'll thank you for your time, and hopefully we can take a few questions. Uh, and before I forget, um, if you don't get a chance to ask your question, you have a number of options. We'll have the Confluence Questions Forum open. I'll also be at the support bar for, the re for most of the rest of the day. Feel free to come by. Uh, we can talk in depth there. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over and take a few questions. First slide after the party, all right? I hope I wasn't talking too loud. You guys okay? Like I say, if you think of it, uh, uh, are you? Ah, nice. So, uh, right. That's a good question. You can configure the wording, uh, certainly, uh, and you do have some options. Uh, they're not built into the process yet. What we've done in support is to inject a little bit of JavaScript to change it. Um, it is a customization uh, that's beyond the reach of just an IT team with no developer resources, but it is possible, uh, and I would expect for you to get more and more control over your portal over time. Right. Nice. Ah, I answered this one yesterday, but since the answer is not up there, uh, with, um, this is a common uh, request. I mean, uh, often your customers are not working in isolation. They want to share with parts of their team. Uh, with agent-based pricing, it's not possible to do this type of collaboration unless you give uh, someone a, a seat against your Jira user license, but it is a pretty popular user request. Um, if you look at this ticket on, on the, the forum, um, I've linked to the two, uh, the two feature requests. One is for individuals and one is for groups. I would keep an eye on those uh, because I, I think this is something we hear over and over again. Go back, yeah.
Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. There was a similar question about the other end, and I, maybe I was answering the wrong question. Thank you for that. You, you certainly, you, you do already have the ability to collaborate with your larger team. You can have collaborators in, in your organization who don't have agent licenses, but do have JIRA licenses, and they can see other people's issues. Your agents can, of course, see each other's issues on the agent views. It's down to you to define. It depends how you do it. What we typically do in our organization is we configure uh, what we call MIA, um, agent views, where you say, these are for people who we know are on vacation, or these are tickets that are taking longer than a certain amount of time, uh, and then people will just pick those up as they come back. Okay. Or you'll reassign the issues when people go. Make a filter just for those. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so, so the permissions to actually see the issues um, are just like they are in JIRA. You can control what groups of people, what roles they have. Um, you have pretty good control over who can see issues. Uh, and that, that hasn't changed in the service desk world. Yep. But the customer cut side has changed. This is the one I was responding to. So just remember, just rewind a bit. There w it's not currently possible without giving someone a full seat on your, against your junior license, um, but there are two pretty popular uh, feature requests about around it that I'd encourage you to watch, because a lot of times, even even if it's it's uh, further out on our roadmap, you'll see plugins and third-party things to close it, tips and tricks. Um, so even if you don't get an answer today or tomorrow, you'll you'll meet other people who are dealing with the same issue. So if you look at this one on the, our confluence question space, there's two service desk tickets that are linked, one for groups and one for individuals. Right. Uh, uh, it's possible to do it after the ticket is created, certainly. Uh, that's one of the things that we do. We use the, the automation plugin, which you can get off the marketplace for free. It's one of the ones that my team developed. Um, and so we look for issue creation and we might fill in other things, uh, depending on what the customer supplied. Uh, and you certainly can define a service desk uh, that includes kind of canned information. So you get a list of service requests, request types, and you can choose uh, what each lozenge means in terms of pre-populated data. So in that sense, you can actually say, okay, when you click this button, these three fields are filled out without you ever seeing them. Um, but you certainly can go in behind and also put in external data, um, which we do. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So the um, ability to see a project is still uh, in your control. It's still very fine-grained. Uh, you can say, these people see this project. Uh, that may change slightly in the agent-based pricing model. Um, but I'd be happy, if, you, if you're the one who asked this or one of the people who voted, I'd be happy to go through it in detail and show you what it can and can't do. But you certainly can control who can see a project. Um, and that's pretty much how you would satisfy this. You would have a project per company and you would have a group per company and you would say people in this group can see this project. And if you're the one asking the question of voting on it and I'm not answering it, just throw it up. Ah, uh, this is coming uh, very soon. I'm not sure about including attachments, but I know that email is one of the things that they're working hard to satisfy. We've um, done it a little different way in the short term, uh, but that's definitely coming. We know that people want to be able to interact by email. And it's possible to do now, it's just not as easy. Um, but again, um, 2.0 was just released, and I'd be happy to go through it at the support bar where we can actually set it up, play around with it. I can show you what it does and doesn't do. Ah, right, control over the templates, the outgoing templates. Not so much uh, at this point. You, you have more control uh, at the JIRA level. Of course, at JIRA, you're talking about uh, deploying replacement templates. <laughs> uh, but the good news is that um, you can choose whether to use um, Jira's notifications or service desk's notifications, and if branding is one thing you need, you have the option to use Jira's notifications, which do support that. Hmm. Uh, there, there is a um, 
there's kind of a, a sub part of the marketplace which is around workflows uh, that you can install in your own system and use. And there definitely is one for ITIL. I don't know whether it meets all the requirements, uh, but it is possible to uh, make a process that fits the things you care about, like ITIL. ITIL. And I, if, I would encourage you, if you are, have a copy of JIRA, just to get that workflow, see if, it, if it's even close. Um, but it should be possible. I mean, it's, you can customize it to meet your process needs. Right? Right. Ah. Right. I guess you would need to, to take them through the permissions and show them <coughs> uh, how it keeps people out of the wrong areas. Uh, and I think you could increase the confidence if you're uh, not manually adding people to groups, but provisioning that upstream, which you certainly can do. Um, I think once you have those kind of controls in place and you say, people from this group see this, um, then it's also a matter of locking down who has the ability to control who can see what. You certainly have audit logs in JIRA, um, and you could um, put those controls in the hands of a few people, and they would be saying, just as they would with a host name, they would be saying, create accounts for these customers on this host. They wouldn't create accounts for those customers on another host. It's the same concern, uh, and you do have the controls to, to segment that within a single instance. Right. Yes. So um, there is a new dashboard, um, because we understand that you have multiple points of contact with your customers and that you want for them to be able to see their issues across that. Um, I haven't looked at the 2.03 uh, portal, but we could certainly look at that. Uh, that's something we were concerned about as well. Um, but I guess part of what Christoph talked about in the introduction is right now, if you have uh, a single point of presence that you can announce as a, as a separate URL, uh, it fits better, but it's coming, the ability to go across project. And I would expect for you to get the same view of your issues, uh, which in Service Desk is also searchable, so that if you're a repeat customer and you have 50 or 100 cases, you can find that one you wanted to refer to and say, oh, yeah, I paid you here, or oh, wow, I didn't see that, didn't go through. Uh, so I would expect that that cross-project stuff would be there. Um, but even if, it, I guess if it's not, I guess it's just only a little bit ahead of the curve. I know a lot of people need that. Yep. Any more? Great. Awesome. Thank you, Tony. No problem.